Hello guys, this is good like and I'd like to talk a bit about the instance of gardens, contaminated gardens to be more specific, in Raider Z. I almost soloed it. It took me two hours, but I almost soloed it. Oh my god. What what an ordeal it was. And let me be honest, you could probably cut down the soloing time significantly if you knew what you were doing. Probably something like an hour and 15 minutes. Unfortunately, I don't believe you can solo the last boss. At least from what I've seen. Maybe there's other abilities that would help, but I don't see any way at the moment. At least not with appropriate level gear, perhaps if you vastly over gear it then, but right now no. And I'll tell you why, later. Let's start off with the basics. There are lots of trash mobs which will be hidden in the ground, so as you approach them they will pop out, or if you hit them. The largest pack I saw was the size of 3. I never picked it up because I could go around it, I only picked up packs of 2 and 1. The mobs in the packs were either ranged dudes or melee dudes. Casters tend to be by themselves and only in the second half of the instance. The ranged dudes were quite simple, you could block pretty much everything they throw at you and they were stunnable, knockbackable, throw down the ball basically you could keep them down for as long as you wanted one-on-one -on -one, they posed not much of a challenge as long as you blocked at the right time the melee dudes however seemed to be slightly more resistant to my attacks and they also had one of the unblockable attacks which would knock you down which you had to avoid slightly annoying I had to do a lot of kiting to take down double packs of these mobs, though one versus one was significantly easier, especially against casters and ranged dudes. The casters they have kind of a dead zone where they won't be able to hit you, they will just hit behind you. I'm not sure if this is a bug, but it made soloing them basically a spam fest because most of my attacks would interrupt them as it is and the rest that would manage to go through would just go over my head anyway. They hit me for insignificant damage melee wise and they didn't do it often enough to pose a threat. Besides trash mobs there, there's environmental hazards specifically that there will be flower patches which will release gas which will hurt you after five stacks for a significant chunk of your life. It hit me for 700 which is about a third of my health. I'm not sure if it's a static damage or percentage damage but it it really hurts. You mustn't stand in them if you can avoid it and generally it's really simple to do so. You can go around them even if there's flowers there. That doesn't mean that they release gas. You can just hug the wall if necessary. If you do not see a path and you shouldn't get hit anyway. If you do get hit, get the fuck out of there ASAP by any means necessary. Very annoying trash mobs were the wasps, which weren't even elite. They were just flying around really hard to hit, which annoyed me to no end. Oh, those bastards, especially since they poison you, they're really hard to block as well, and most of the time they'll come in too. Another environmental hazard that you will find are the spikes that burst out from the ground. They follow a simple pattern, I'm definitely sure that you'll be able to figure out and avoid it with ease. On to the mini bosses. The first mini boss was a giant tree and that's about it. I pulled him out of his patch of poisonous flowers, just ran around him whenever he used an ability. He had this ability which Im would immobilize you, I would suggest avoiding that because otherwise he could get a free attack on you but beside that he didn't pose any challenge whatsoever. He didn't even have that much health. Trash had more health than this guy. He is piss easy. But the other two bosses are even easier. The other two bosses, mini bosses, were casters. Just like the trash casters, 
they had this dead zone, but it seems because they're even larger, they had even larger of a dead zone, so I wasn't even close to where the spells landed. As I was in the melee range, once again they didn't do significant melee damage, allowing me to solo them quite easily. The only thing that made them interesting was the fact that at certain amount of health they would run away, dig, dig themselves in the ground and heal themselves. Unless you hit them, bursting out after you hit them and doing some damage. The first mini boss was simple in this respect, you could easily take him out, no problem. The second mini boss, however, was very annoying. Not only he summoned wasps at the start of a fight, causing me much fury, anger, and annoyance, and health drops, god. Also, there's tons of spikes in the, the place that he is guarding, which means that you cannot easily get to him. I allowed him to heal, I don't think he healed to full, just a little bit, then came back after he got bored apparently of being underground and then I kicked his ass, even though he did it twice. So, on to the bosses. There are two bosses. The first boss is Aruka, or Aruka. That's probably how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. Aruka. This guy has a mushroom on his head like the rest of the dudes, except it's weird and you can use it for crafting a certain item. Fortunately, he only drops one. I'm not sure if everybody can pick up more than one person, but if you reset him, you can pick up as many as you want. It's not difficult at all. Unfortunately, I figured this out the hard way by dying with him being at 10% or so. And as I've learned, if you die, the bosses reset completely. Yes. All the way to 100%. And let me tell you, Aruka is no boss that takes himself down easily. He has really long melee range, which means that unless I do only hit and run attacks, I would get hit. I would get hit even when I was doing hit and run attacks if I took too long. I had to time it with the right abilities. His abilities were quite many. First he had this basic charge ability where he would pull out his weapon up front and then charge ahead. Or charge in a weird S shape. Yeah, sometimes he charges straight, sometimes he charges to the sides. Making charging him at the start of this charge when you're in front of him a really bad idea. Because he might just charge into your face. Besides that he has very many melee attacks. One of his attacks is charge up and release which causes a huge whirlwind which hits you multiple times and knocks you back. Some basic strikes and unblockable melee strike. Also he has some magical attacks specifically that he will shoot a poison bolt from what I've seen in a straight line from where he's facing which gave you ample time to hit him in the back and also he will sometimes create a giant gas cloud around himself which will put you to sleep for a few seconds allowing him to get a free hit on you. I think that's all of his abilities, I don't think I missed anything. And besides that sometimes he will just stop in his tracks allowing you to hit him a few times which was basically why I didn't go completely insane and managed to solo him eventually even if it took a ridiculous amount of time. The only times when I could reasonably attack him with solo was when he was charging up his frontal attack and after he was winded and was recuperating. Besides that, it was really really difficult to find a good moment to strike. The problem is that he tends to strike back really really fast and while the damage is insane it adds up really quickly and his health lasts for a lifetime. On to the second boss. The second boss of the instance is apparently a giant tree flower thing. He has actually two phases. The first phase he is uprooted and walks on his hands which seem to do damage if, you, if he steps on you. Very insignificant damage. 
but still. If you attack him from behind, I'm sure he'll try to slap you with his tail. Other than that, he has basic frontal melee attack. And sometimes he tends to get angry, smack his hand down to the ground, causing spikes to erupt all around him in a sort of an egg shape. Though I'm sure it bends a little the further it goes away from him. He also likes to leap in front, but I'm not sure if he would do that if he has anyone in melee range or not. Phase 2, he roots himself in the ground, causing the entire ground to become poisonous, at least in the nearby vicinity. When I went about half the room away from him, I stopped doing damage. So, technically you could say, oh, well, why couldn't you saw him? And here comes the big thing. In this phase, he has a healing ability, which I don't seem to be able to interrupt in any way, shape or form. So on top of doing non-stop AoE, even small but consistent damage, he also heals himself from all the damage that I've caused over previous phases, while still doing various things like frontal attacks with bolts and uh, spewing a random bomb in a random place on the ground. The healing thing is why I think this boss is impossible to solo at the moment. If it's interruptible I haven't found a way to do so. If you know how to please tell me. I'll be back and I'll kick his ass. Two hours later. <laughs> anyway I enjoyed the instance for all it was worth it. It took an insane amount of time to do, two hours soloing, but it was pretty cool. I definitely want to try out in a group. However, like I said in the day four video, everybody is looking for clerics or DPS whores. Nobody wants a defender. So I'm sure I would do significant damage with my skills. I'm not sure that other people will be willing to accept me to their party. Oh well. I'll just level a cleric and get instant group advice from everybody in the friggin zone for every single thing in the friggin zone. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you later.